Welcome back, loyalty. This is Robert Lloyd, and I want to give you guys a few tips on how to actually create your t-shirt designs. Now, the tips I want to give you guys are more of like mistakes that graphic designers kind of make and what you guys can kind of like avoid going forward, all right? So I don't want to play around with this one. I want to give you guys the best that you guys can have and you guys can create the best that you guys can create, all right? So let's start this off. So number one, this is kind of a big one because this kind of messes up everything. But if you're not designing for the overall shirt, then you're kind of messing up. The shirt actually has its own color. So you guys can kind of like design your design with the color of the actual shirt. Design the shirt with the color, but the actual shirt color did not come out to be the color of the shirt that they designed for. So it's like you have to know the color code for the actual shirt that you're designing for because if you mess that up, then you're really messing up the entire plan, which that's what design means. Design means plan. If you guys don't have a, a proper plan, then you're kind of really messing up going forward. So make sure that you know the color of the actual shirt, the overall shirt and stuff like that and then you'll be able to create something amazing going forward another problem here and it's kind of a two for one is not having the correct file and not having the correct file size now here's the thing with the file if you guys are creating gradients and stuff like that you want to use a png i'm just going to be honest with you you're not going to be able to print that anywhere else unless you're doing like a dtg and you might as well use a png and not a jpeg because a jpeg is going to give you the white background you want to have something that's off the background you want to use a png you won't be able to stretch the png out because it's not an eps now the eps will let you size up and down no matter what because it's made out of numbers and stuff like that a png is locked in on whatever size you have now i'd say 14 by 17 is the best to go that's what teespring was telling you to do that's what spreadshirts tells you to do it's just kind of normal for me to use 14 by 17 it's just like a long strip of paper that goes up and down like that if you're using like 100 by 100 10 by 10 or whatnot then you're gonna get that square and that square doesn't always translate well on t-shirt designs or anything like that. So you can always mess up doing that. And that's something I want you guys to avoid. Pick the right file size, pick the right file type. Okay. If you're going to do something elaborative, something a little bit more artistic with gradients and stuff like that, and you're not using a screen printer, you're using a DTG machine. EPS does not work out. You want to use a raster. You want to use like PNG. You don't want to use anything else. SVG, that's a scalable vector graphic, okay? You might as well just use EPS, which you guys got to know how to use. Like, you got to know what that means. So log into Illustrator, make your designs in that, export out of EPS, and then upload that wherever you need to go. That's good for screen printing. Here's another one that's kind of off, and you guys are kind of like, eh. I don't understand it too much, but a lot of people kind of mess this up. A lot of designers who aren't really classically trained or anything like that, they just kind of pick it up on their own kind of mess up one. But selecting the wrong typeface is a huge problem, okay? Now, I've talked about this before. If you're using the serif font, which has the little feet or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Like they have the feet and the arms and stuff like that. If you're using that, that's typewriter font, okay? That's good for like school. That's good for like academics. If you're making like a t-shirt that's like made out of a dictionary definition or something like that, then you want to use that. That's good, okay? If you're making like art and it's something elaborative and it's a little bit more like creative and fun and modern and all that stuff, then using that kind of font is not going to translate well. You want to use something that's a little bit more up and down, which is a sans serif, okay? So Futura Bold and stuff like that, that's really good to use. Now, for people who wanna use like fun fonts and stuff like that, like the squiggly stuff and the scripts and all that, they're good to use. You guys can use those instead of like sans serifs and stuff like that. But just know that there's some that could be used appropriately while others aren't really matching. So I use like Amatic a lot. And a Matic is only good for like holidays for me, you know? So if I was to make like a jittery kind of like illustration, I can use a Matic and that will pretty much match. But if I'm using like Comic Sans and it's not like a comic book kind of like illustration, then I'm kind of not doing it myself any justice. Another thing, the people that use like scripts and stuff like that, like handwritten fonts and stuff like that, they're looking kind of like cursives. We all know that that's annoying. We all have seen that and that's not like the most fun thing to look at. Like I'm a designer, I hate it so so much and every time I see it it just irks me a lot of people do too even people who aren't designers they see it 
And I'm like, uh, there's something about this font that just doesn't look good. And the reason why is because it's skinny and you have to add like a stroke to it. And that stroke doesn't always work out. So you want to try to avoid some of that stuff that don't work, but it has to fit like your art. So that's just my little message on that. Now, number four, I want to talk about something that's a little bit more like number one with colors, except this time I'm talking more about the design. I mean, I guess I am kind of talking about the shirt too, going for it with this. If the design has like black in it and the shirt is black, kind of knock that out a lot of times people don't knock that out they'll take the black design and they'll put that on a black shirt and now you have two different blacks that are contrasting each other and it doesn't really work let's just say you had a red shirt and in the design was actual red you know you want to go ahead and knock out the red in the design so the red on the actual shirt comes through and looks good you want to make sure that the shirt is actually working with your design instead of your design not blending with the shirt that kind of mistake can actually make your design look a whole lot more amateur than what it actually is you don't want to have an amateur design you want to have something that's going to work for your audience and stuff like that so knock out the colors in the design that aren't necessary if black is already in the shirt then why you have black in the design okay knock it out just go ahead and turn it into a smart object on photoshop and just take out the black if you're on Illustrator, you can just delete that at any time. You know, if black is what you're designing for in Illustrator, you can just delete that out. That's just a tip to help you look a little bit more better. I just want to reiterate something real quick, something that I've been saying since the beginning of my channel, all right? You have to know who your target audience is. You can't just make something for a kid and say that it's for a nurse because that nurse is not going to like it. Yeah, I mean, she might wear it here and there because it's just a shirt to wear on her off day. But she's not going to rep it like she would normally rep it if it was made for her, okay? If you had to wear a design, why not wear a design that fits you, okay? Not something that fits somebody else. If you're going to make advertisements based off of what you made for a specific group of people, then why would you have advertisements that are actually for kids and not for adults, right? So you have to know your audience. Know your audience. Know what they like. Know how they're going to react to this type of things that you have, okay? Because if they're not going to react to it, then you have poor design. Let's just keep it real. And then as a bonus number five, I want to say use mock-ups, okay? Mock-ups are good. Like they show you how your design is going to look on like a t-shirt. They also show you what your design is going to look like on a website. So actually have that put together as a designer. If you're talking to a designer, a designer should actually put that together for you anyways. And that's just something that you guys can hold on to going forward. And with that final tip, that's pretty much it, you guys. So I hope you guys learned something. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And in the comment section, below tell me if there's anything that i missed i'm pretty sure i missed a lot because there's a whole bunch actually out there but these were the ones that i felt that were a little bit more important for anybody that are actually making designs and stuff like that and if you guys actually did learn something outside of just liking this go ahead and subscribe i do this all the time as a matter of fact bail me because i'm going to be putting out a whole bunch of videos that's pretty much good for you guys and it can actually add value to the stuff that you're putting out but with that being said you guys i got to get up out of here so stay amazing stay credible above all else Stay awesome.